Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today is Painting Tuesday and last week we speed built the entirety of the Catacombs box set. Today we're going to start with some painting of the doors and walkways. I decided to start off with the walkways and given that the walkways were made out of wood I started with the contrast wildwood and as you can see I ended up spilling a lot of it but since I was using a plastic mat I decided Instead of cleaning it up, just use what was spilled first, and then go back to the pot. The initial areas were easy, but I had to take care not to get too much of the wild wood onto the bones, as I wanted to hit those up with a different color later. Once that side was done, I hit the edges, and set it aside to dry. Next I grabbed one of the larger planks, and this one was a lot easier given that there was really only two colors involved. Uh, there was the contrast wildwood, and then the rope wrappings, which later on I ended up using snake bite leather. Originally I had thought to use a darker color for some of the pieces, thinking that they might look good as a burnt log, but eventually I decided that they were just going to be logs with the bark still on them, and left them as the contrast wildwood. Now setting that one outside to dry, I started on the actual doorways. After some thought, I decided that anything that looked like bone was going to get a coating of skeletal hoard to make it actually look like bone. I like the idea that whoever was building these doorways in the past uh, used stone or paint or something that look like actual bone, or maybe they actually use giant bones in order to construct the doorways. So the skeletal horde really made the bones and the skulls on everything pop out. So this doorway had a whole lot of nooks and crannies, and I decided that it, instead of starting with the skeletal horde, I was going to hit all of the spaces in between the skulls with Basilicum Gray. Once it dried and got a very light wash from either Null Oil or Agrax uh, Earthshade, these, would, these areas would look a lot like actual stone. Since I already had the Basilicum Grey out, I decided to hit up any other areas that I thought would actually be stone. So this included any areas in between uh, connection points, the spaces next to the doors, and the tops and bottoms of each pillar. Thank you. 
there were a lot of little spaces that ended up needing the basilicum gray to be viewed as stone. Fortunately, a fine tip brush really makes short work of those areas. And having finished one door, it was time to go back to the other one and hit everything stone. This also had the added effect of letting one door finish drying before I went over it with a different color. And once again, hit up the tops of each of the pillar and the bottoms of each of the pillar with the silicon gray to make it have that stuff look. I also switched to a slightly larger brush to make this a little bit quicker. Now this brush is actually a gift from a friend of mine. Uh, she got it at Alta. It is a makeup brush, and to be completely honest, it works really, really well for every painting job I've ever done with all my models. So moving on to the first bridge, I decided that, just like the doors, part of it was going to be stone and part of it was going to be actual bone. So here I'm hitting up all the stone areas with the basilicum gray. Now that that's done, I set the basilicum gray aside, and it's time to start working with the skeletal horde again. Going back to the first door, I finished off all of the skulls on the first side. And once I liked how it looked, went to the other side and finished those skulls off as well. I used a generous amount of skeletal horde to really give it that kind of aged bone look. Now this part was a little bit tricky. Each of the slots in the door had a skull in it. I didn't want to get the door itself the skeletal horde, so it took me a moment to make sure that all of the skulls were painted, but none of the door frame itself was. Going back to the walkway, the entire skull got a healthy coating of the skeletal horde. It 
looking back, I could have probably painted this as uh, basilicum gray to make it stone, but I really like the idea that whoever made this uh, walkway went out, killed a couple of giants, and then used their skulls, which they assumed was the hardest thing around to make the bridge. Now that I'm done with the skeletal horde for a while, it was time to go back to a different color. So here I went back to the contrast wildwood, and every part of the door that looked like it would have been wood got a quick coat. And as you can see, that skeletal horde on the skulls there really makes all the sections of the door pop. And once the first side was done, I flipped it over and did the other side. And once again, I can't overstate the usefulness of a makeup brush in order to paint uh, sections of terrain or even models. They may cost a tad bit more, but they are worth it. So here I'm hitting up anything that I consider to be metal with Black Templar. Also, I should have said this at the beginning, uh, so far the only thing I've been using is contrast paints through this whole thing. Now I like using Black Templar for dark metals or almost like a Damascus type metal. Uh, once it dries, it has a really nice metallic sheen to it. And if you want to make that more pronounced, go a light coating of the Black Templar contrast and then hit it up with a null oil gloss and it really shines like uh, polished metal. I like the idea of the stone being encapsulated with uh, metal cladding, which is why I ended up going with the Black Templar around some of the areas that were stonework. Now here I'm also painting the inside of the eyes and the nose socket on the skulls with the Black Templar, just to give it that nice dark shade. Going back to the door archway, I began the Black Templar coating as well. And given that these archways are supposed to be in some kind of catacomb, I thought that the darker look really suited them. And as you can see with the area with the skulls, once you paint in the Black Templar, the skulls really pop and stand out.
going back to the actual walkway, I started painting all the edges, as well as the strip across the center in the Black Templar. I like the idea that the bridge itself was made of stone with some giant heads, and then the whole thing was wrapped in metal to keep it all bonded together. I'm only painting the bottom of the spikes themselves and not the bottom of the bridge because the bridge is always going to be this side up, so I didn't really see the point in painting the underside of it. Now with that being done, I cleaned the brush, and I grabbed some blood for the blood god. So the inside of each of these eye sockets ended up getting a full coating of the blood for the blood god, because I really thought that these would be pools of blood somewhere amongst the battlefield. That, and it just, to me, looked really cool. Also, with such dark colors for the entirety of this build, having the blood in there really made it stand out. It's, it's a very strong contrast. Now, having painted the inside of these sockets, I thought it would be really interesting to have them crying blood, like, like the door itself is weeping over the battles that have been happening. So going back to the first walkways that I did, I did some quick touch-ups with Wraith Bone on all of the parts with the bone. And as that was drying, I grabbed the second walkway and did some touch-ups on all of the wrappings. This, helped a l this helps a lot because since the contrast paints pick up and accent the colors that are underneath it, it makes it a lot easier when applying the next layer to them. So here I'm using Balthazar Gold to paint all the rivets on the door. This gives it a really nice shine uh, contrast and just makes the door itself stand out. Then the ring loops on either side of the door, the bracket that holds them in place got a coating of the ba Balthazar gray or the Balthazar gold, but the ring itself didn't. And on the door, I also painted. Once I saw how that looked, I really liked it, so I ended up going over all of the studs on each of the pillars, as well as the top frame of the door with the Balthazar gold. And then ended up doing it on the metal grating as well. 
this gives a nice shine contrast to all the all the darker colors that have been used. And as you can see, as it starts to dry, it really stands out. Then I went back to the other arch and did the same thing. This one was a little bit easier since there wasn't the door to do all the detail work as well. And I went to the bridge and did the same thing. Having finished that, I went back to the first walkway, grabbed the skeletal horde, and did a quick go over of each of the bones. Going to the bases of both of the doors, I ended up painting over them with Agrax Dunes. Uh, this gave them a very sandy tan color, which, once that dried, I realized that it wasn't quite dark enough for the aesthetic. So while that was drying, I decided to go back to the first bridge, or second bridge, walkway, whatever, and went over the entire bottom with the contrast wildwood.
since this was the underside of the walkway, I wasn't really being all that careful about the wrapping sections. And eventually decided that I can go back and fix those up later. So while that was drying, I went back to the very first walkway and hit the bottom and any remaining sides with the contrast wildwood. Alright, now, now that the second walkway was dry, it was time to go over the wrappings with some snakebite leather. And having realized that I didn't paint the tips on this side, I quickly went over them with the contrast wildwood and took the time to touch up any areas that I had missed. So like I said, the base layer of the doorways wasn't quite dark enough, so I decided to try a marbled look with it and went over the entire base that had been coated with Talazar sand with uh, Basilicum Grey. This ended up giving it a really nice marbled appearance and definitely made it dark enough to fit the rest of the aesthetic that I was going for. The final step of the detail painting was to paint the rings on the doorway. Now the rings ended up using Auric Armor Gold. This once again gave it a really nice contrast to the rest of the darkness of the piece and made the rings stand out. Once that was done, I washed each piece in the build with two washes. Anything that was painted wood or stone got washed in Agrax Earthshade, and then I washed the skulls in that as well. Everything else got a quick wash of the Kuraberg Crimson. And here we have the finished pieces. I ended up painting the inside of the Chaos Marks with uh, Blood Angels Red. Give it a really nice pop. All right, everyone, so that is it. If you liked what you saw, leave a like and a comment. Subscribe for future content. Tune in next week where we will be painting all of the barricades and some of the scatter terrain. This is CS, the Viking Gamer, signing off. Remember, victory or Valhalla.